Hi everyone, and welcome back to this comprehensive video series covering all things 3D modeling in Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please check them out so you can catch up with us. And with that being said, let's continue. So if we go back to our layer tab, I'll drag this down a bit. It automatically creates a separate folder. So if we get rid of that, the entire line art and tone is gone. By default, it also hides the 3D layer for you. You can rename this whatever you want. It just takes the same name as the 3D model and adds a two next to it as in the second version of it. And these below are all our layers. Fill is the white. So you can get rid of that if you want. And if we tick this, it'll show through. If we re-select this, we won't be able to see anything because it's the white. It's actually the fill of the white. I tend to not really use this at all because my canvas by default is going to be white, so I don't need it. All right, the next one are our tones. These are tone layers. This isn't unique to 3D. If I get my lasso or selection tool and I do that and I select add tone, I can create a tone straight away from there and the layer will look basically identical to this. Each tone layer comes with a mask. So technically this entire canvas right now is covered in tone, but the mask right here is hiding it. So if we unenable the mask, there you go. The whole canvas is filled. Enable mask. When you are adding tone to this layer, so let's get our pen up, anything we draw on this canvas, on a tone layer, is gonna be tone, no matter what brush you use. So I can get my airbrush out. And woo, we have tone. Tone airbrush for nicer shading. But you have to be on the mask. If you click the layer itself, you won't be able to draw it. You have to be clicking on the mask to draw with tone. As you can see here, this percentage right now, these percentages, they were just the density, you know, that little bar with those arrows, those sliders. So this is 20%, the lightest, 40 and 60. If we go into the layer properties, we can change this. As you can see, it's a tone layer. You can change the frequency, which we should never do, but I'm gonna show you what it means in terms of polka dotness. As you can see, if we have the frequency down really low, it becomes more of a pattern that you would see on a shirt or a skirt, etc. But we want ours at 50, because we want it to shade. And if you have it high, you can see what I'm talking about, the effect, the moire effect. We've got some lines there, got a bit checkered there. That's really severe. 50 tends not to do that. It changes a little bit, but that's just a digital effect of the computer. It won't look like that when you print in black and white. The density, again, like I said, is how light it is. So if we go all the way up, it will go dark. If you go all the way to 100, it will be black. Another good way of adding black, if you so choose, if you go down to one, you won't barely be able to see it. And I'm gonna show you some heart and frequency there you go we want to change the angle of those hearts just go down to dot settings and angle there you go but we want it at 45 and we want it circle and we want it 50. they're all of our tone layers we can get rid of them if we don't want them. this one i'll skip this one for now but this one right here is the Imagine that menu that was just up, it's the left side. So get rid of that, we get, all, get rid of all the detail, including the black fill. So this is our vector layer right here, and we can change the lines now. So let's get onto operation and change some lines. First of all, I want my layer gray so I can change the anti-aliasing. That's gonna make it a little smoother. We can alter the width and you can also use those line altering tools that we talked about earlier. Again, you may want to change the brush that you used. Like I said, we've got this nice 
interesting pen right here. So I will like maybe 20. It's pretty severe. And again, I would duplicate this, put it under, and I would make this a G pen, and I would put it on five, or maybe less. <laughs> Still get that kind of uniformity, but we've got the added benefit of the G pen underneath, filling in the tiny gaps. You can merge the layers so there's just one. Romongo is printed in black and white, right? So anti-aliasing while it looks good, you can't really get away with it because it's grey, right? The grey layer, not monochrome. So when you change it to monochrome, you'll get this, but it makes the drawing look really rough. And that's not always a bad thing. I'm partial to it because I like a more rougher hand-drawn look. And what I would do now, my process, would be to clean up using the vector eraser. So there's a bunch of these little dots that I don't like. I would just get rid of them. Just clean up any dots that I don't like, because that was... This obviously just means that the program couldn't detect it as well as it should have. Etc, etc. There's a few everywhere. A few lines here I would just get rid of. On here a lot on the bed as you can see you can add all these details later with a softer touch with your own pen i'm not going to do it all right now but essentially that's the process hi guys sorry for the interruption but if you're enjoying this video and it's helping you please give it a like and a share so others can find it what helped you might help someone else if you could also subscribe that'd be great too there'll be plenty of videos in this series so click that big black button below so you don't miss a single one if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Once you are happy with the line width, I see I would change this right here to narrow this bad boy a bit. There's lots of little changes that you want to go through. You want to edit the line art to the point where you will not make any changes later. You can still delete things later on you won't be able to use the vector eraser. So if you want to use a vector eraser for anything, this is the stage to do it. Generally, if you use a raster layer, you're going to get a cleaner image, but you won't have as much control over it, which is a shame. <laughs> so if you're a stickler for smooth lines, then I would recommend raster layer over this vector layer. You've got relatively smooth lines here, except if you move over here, you've got some weird stuff going on. Which I would just delete with the vector ruler. There's a lot of stuff you can delete and then draw by hand. Essentially what I would do is clean all this up. It doesn't look too bad out here. But the curtains, again, I said I would do that by hand and I would, which means I would probably delete the model before converting. I would also do the clock because as you can see, it's basically nonsensical right now. Clean up the lampshade definitely and the bag. And I would probably try and smooth out these doorknobs. They're a bit angular for my taste. Delete that line because it's too jagged, etc. Just general cleanup. I would be adding folds and bends into the pillows and the blankets to get a more soft, natural look. Yes, yeah, so I would definitely do the uh, clock by hand, as you can see. And a lot of the more finicky stuff, these two lines have kind of merged into one that that's okay i guess especially if we just make the entire thing black then that might actually work nice as a bit of shading but i would definitely fix this one and basically be a bit more refined <laughs> the little tip i wanted to tell you about when it comes to using tones for coloring if we make this visible and click on this layer and we go to layer properties if you uncheck tone layer it will simply return to a gray layer and what this means is incredible we can go back to the layer right click on it go down to selection from layer and create selection that just means clip studio paint will select everything on this layer if we create a new layer and we choose make sure it's color yep and we'll go to my swatches and we'll pick a nice blue these are all my copics, and we fill. Suddenly we've got 
a shaded layer. Now this looks like an animation frame actually. But this is incredible for coloring because all of a sudden, if we turn off all the tone, we have our shading layer done in a second. And we can make that multiply and the entire image will have uniform shading. So usually for shading with multiply, you go for a more of a like a purpley gray kind of color. So let's just fill my paper with a kind of a yellowy cream. Let's make that a little less purple. We've got the start of a drawing, maybe like a drawing at sunset. If we got rid of this shading layer and colored all this in, the chest of drawers can be maybe like a, a white kind of color. I'm going to use the enclose and fill tool. It's going to be pretty rudimentary and the clock and the lamp are probably going to get it, but there we go. And we turn on the shading and... All right, that wasn't a very good example. <laughs> Let's, let's get a brown for Teddy. Little darker. There we go. That's much better. See, because we've multiplied this layer, he's already shaded. We can do that with everything. And that is just a wonderful tool that I don't think many people know about. And I just love it. It's, again, another shortcut because we're looking to do this as fast as possible with not much time to spare. Again, see here, I would probably delete some of this shading. This is very poor. I'm using a mouse. Forgive me. And just have that side colored. And then I would color that the navy blue it was before. It's a traditional Japanese school bag. And we've got the shading there on that side. The straps would be white, but I digress. Let's have a, maybe like a cool minty kind of green for the bedspread. Again, the colors are there and it's just wonderful. I can't get better than that. That is just such a useful tool. Just by taking the selection of tone created by the LT conversion is invaluable. Again, I've nearly colored an entire drawing and I've done it in five minutes. So I would 100% use this for a webtoon because that has to be colored. And again, if you're a one man team and you've got to do backgrounds in say 20 of your 60 panels in one week, let's go. Let's use every shortcut we can. Just so many tricks of the trade that we can use. And again, if we don't like this purple kind of shading, we can just control U and change the hue. And we can change the entire feel of the room. Have it more on the cold spectrum or a really warm spectrum. That's a really nice one, a kind of brown. We have it a bit more ready even, yeah. Very nice evening look. I just go nuts. This one, outline one, is generally the right side of the menu. So when we click it, we're gonna get all our black fill and our extra little details if we chose to have them. I generally don't like to have the extra details, so I just have the black. And there we go. That's a bit more of a severe coloring of the same drawing. So I usually name this black or beta because beta is what they use in Japan. That's what we use because beta simply means like fill in Japanese, like a fill layer, fill in black layer basically is the what they're going for there. And you can see this line right here, that is actually the cast shadow. So let's get rid of that and get our 3D model back. See the shadow that the bed is casting? The LT conversion actually gives you the line of the shadow. If you want, if you don't want that line, you can just get rid of the cast shadow on your 3D layer by going to the light source and select the bed and cast shadows on ground, get rid of that and you won't see it. And that's it for this video. So please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Don't forget to like and share and thank you for watching. Bye.